the most efficient way to shave off some significant minutes from your next marathon, 10K or half marathon time? Running economy, in most cases, offers the biggest potential for improvement. And that's what we're going to talk about today. What is the difference in running economy versus, for example, efficiency? And why does it matter in the run? And why is, is it maybe a, a thing in cycling or maybe it isn't? Let's have a look. So basically what we're aiming for is a certain speed, right? We will aim to increase our speed. And so to speak, internally what's happening, you're producing power, right? Measured with your power meter on the bike, obviously, or nowadays also calculated um, based on some measurements in the run. There's a mechanical power output and this is translated into speed. In the world of cycling, this is mostly aerodynamics. Think about it. How much power you produce on the bike, how fast you can go with that, it's mostly aerodynamics. And then there's another step before that, and this is translating metabolic energy into mechanical power. And the better way to distinguish this, this is really efficiency. If you look into the literature, you talk about gross efficiency and stuff. This is how you are translating metabolic energy into mechanical power output. And then this part here would be better be described maybe as economy. The issue now with running and the difference with cycling, again, power meters are out there. Um, it's not, you know, there needs to be a little bit more uh, data here, how much it really affects the mechanical output. But when you talk about running economy, what it actually does, it it bypasses the mechanical power output. It basically goes from here to here and is looking at metabolic cost versus how fast you can run. And this is a thing in running, and it's also a thing in swimming, which we're going to tackle in another video. And it's not really a thing in cycling because think about it in cycling your range of motion and your movement which are actually producing the mechanical power is you know there's not much room here for you to change right your foot is fixed on the pedal the pedal is fixed to the pedal arm to the crank arm so it's you know how you can move in which direction you can move there's really not a choice in contrast to running and also swimming, you can move your limbs in all three dimensions, right? So, you know, you could move in any direction. It's not necessarily resulting in higher running speed in this forward direction. So you could have actually metabolic cause attached to movements that don't result in gaining speeds. So this is basically what running economy is. So how is it measured? Well. In most cases, what you will find is looking at oxygen uptake, VO2, over speed. This is the most common way to express running economy. Okay? Now, it has some very important shortcomings. And the shortcomings is basically coming basically from VO2 is not metabolic cost. The worst thing that can happen to you when you look at running economy is that somebody just takes the raw measured VO2 at the mouthpiece in a lab or something and divides it by the running speed. Because when you look at the comparison now and after a certain training period, so many factors influence the VO2 value that you know you basically want to take care of those. So let's assume you go into a lab, you get it measured day one, you go into a lab at a certain running speed, you do a training and maybe come back later after two months, three months, four months, one year whatsoever. Okay? And let's assume at a certain speed, you measure a certain amount of oxygen uptake, right? This is your VO2. Okay? Now, at a low speed, 
which is most likely of interest because you're maybe looking at running economy not at a 100 meter sprint you're looking at your running economy this is what interests you in a half marathon marathon whatever time so you're looking at a sub threshold speed except for 10k maybe okay so what is included in this vo2 measurement first there's a there's a base vo2 right there's a certain amount of oxygen uptake which is not because of the muscles that produce the power that propel you forward to run it's just basic metabolic rate so you would want to deduct it and then on top of that even worse there is especially because you're at low speed there's a certain amount of vo2 that is only coming from fat combustion and that additional oxygen uptake is not there to produce power um, or energy for muscle contraction that's important to note there's an additional vo2 only to prepare so to speak simplified speaking to prepare the fatty acids to get burned as a fuel okay so it is oxygen uptake not for muscle contract contraction which is maybe in there and then there might be even a, you know uh, at higher speeds, there might be even a missing piece because of anaerobic metabolism. So let's assume this is the VO2 that you've measured on day one, and now you do a training. And in the, after the training, let's say the VO2 that is measured is higher, right? It's a little bit higher, looking at this amount maybe. Maybe your basal rate, your base rate didn't change. Maybe it's only higher because you burn more fat and in a worse scenario people are going to tell you hey your fat combustion really got up but your running economy not really good just simple and error by not deducting the fat combustion another possibility would be looking at a 10k performance for example you don't really have fat combustion okay but maybe there's an additional there's an additional metabolic cost in the anaerobic metabolism, right? So maybe there's anaerobic metabolism. Maybe in the first occasion, at higher speed, you've seen a lactate value of, let's say, 8 millimoles. And now you kept training, your metabolism shifted, becoming less anaerobic. And now you have a higher oxygen uptake just because the additional energy from the anaerobic system is lower. Maybe you just only have four millimoles of lactate. What's going to happen? People are going to tell you, hey, it's great, your lactate levels drops. This is a good thing or not. It's a different story, but hey, it's great, your lactate levels drop, but mm, your running economy is not really good because you now need more oxygen. So shortcoming here is metabolic cause is not VO2. So long story short, if you survived this nerdy stuff here, the takeaway message is running economy, when you get it measured, make sure people normalize it for base metabolic rate. Make sure people normalize it for fatty acid combustion. Okay, so only look at the VO2 that goes into muscle contraction and people normalize it for anaerobic energy contribution.